I'm Rodney Ho, uh, professor of pharmaceutics here at University of Washington School of Pharmacy. My topic is about uh, high on UW startup, University of Washington startup, fueling your innovations in the new climate of entrepreneurship. In the next few minutes, uh, to share with you what some of my experience in starting up the company and what is the driver and why I think uh, this is a good time to be uh, entrepreneur and to be starting up companies in the university. So I put together these slides to give you some perspective about what are the changes that I believe it really uh, put in perspective that you can consider starting as a university employee. Uh, doesn't matter you are a scientist, doesn't matter you are a faculty member, or, or you, you affiliated with some sort of staff positions if you have idea that you, you invent in the university, university own that inventions. And in order to start, you need to negotiate this intellectual property, which is your capital to start. And to get it happen, previously, the positions of the, the university is that uh, conflict of interest is to be avoided. You, you, you do not engage in startup. Now you can manage as long as you have a body of individuals who are looking at your, monitoring your activities and make sure that you're not biased toward your company and you're not using university resource to, to actually uh, spend on the development of, of the, the commercial uh, value, then you're okay. Uh, and there's no re resource to start up. Uh, you can imagine uh, at the early stage, all you have is the licensing officers who are trying to, to decide whether your patent, your idea is patentable, and they have very little time to provide the support and guidance. Now we have a, a group of very passionate uh, C four C staff member that help you to guide you what uh, what you need to make your idea sound. And, and, and patentable, and you have more uh, uh, staff member. You have uh, uh, another thing that I think is very important is really customer focus, and, and I, I like the idea that all the staff uh, that come out to, to to engage you about your idea that you disclose whether you uh, which area that you need to develop more. Uh, and, and I mentioned already in the cartoon that uh, there's a high barrier in, in the entry cost and, and now university actually provide creative structures and you can actually negotiate some aspect if you want to start uh, to reduce your, your entry uh, cost uh, much lower and then you can postpone it until you, you raise your money and that doesn't exist. Okay, and that's another piece that's very, very helpful for all of us to think about how, uh, to start your company as long as your idea is sound and, uh, and has a commercial value. Um, and then there's clearly restrictive uh, collaborations and now there's a path developed uh, together uh, by the uh, uh, Office of Research and Commercializations arm of the university. The distinctions between the uh, tech startup and the ph pharmaceutical startup is always a bit more challenging tech startup where you, you can test your idea and you can turn around and the cycle is shorter. You know, three to five years you can turn around and sell it. Uh, as opposed to pharmaceutical products, typically it takes uh, a, a lot more, at least three to five times more. I'll show you in a few minutes. Before I do that, I need to prime you uh, about biopharmaceutical licensing behavior. Okay, so, so in the past, if you have a great idea, if you have a new protein like interleukin-2, interleukin-7, or growth hormone, then people will license it. Okay, not anymore. Uh, you, 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 uh, you, all these low-hanging fruit has been picked. Okay, uh, so pharmaceutical company has has a, a, a innovations challenge. Okay, a lot of new drugs are sort of recycle uh, old drug, uh, and the new drugs are invented by small companies. And so um, they are looking at the product that are three to five years uh, time frame, they're gonna make profits. They're willing to pay these drugs in the clinical testing that show promise. Okay? And they don't license early phase drug anymore. 
not very many. Okay, very few drug uh, license. So the second question that I want to, 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 to sort of pose, I so pose myself and I want to share with you, why now? Because universe, uh, I mean the, the pharmaceutical lic uh, licensing behavior is such that they don't buy your new idea right off the gate. Or they consider pre-competitive space that need to be tested, need to be developed, need to be evaluated all the way to clinic before they buy it. And so, so, so that then open up the opportunity for a smaller boutique company that really specialize in the early phase, novel ideas, and test it, and, 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 and bring it to the stage where big company will engage in your new ideas. Big Pharma like to talk about blockbusters, okay? And, and there's an article written by a, a, a pseudonym, using a pseudonym, a, a senior executive who wrote an article about why pharma must go to Hollywood in a couple of years ago. In this article, he mentions that blockbuster in movie industry, which we borrow from, no longer exists. And blockbusters, old Hollywood model, the new Hollywood model is Pixar. And you all know that Pixar, um, the uh, 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 Apple founder, Steve Jobs bought it at $10 million after uh, many uh, years of Lucasfilm started the company in Emeryville, which is in, uh, across the San Francisco Bay, in a few hundred thousand dollars, uh, started with a, a group of people from Disney. And at that time, computer just started, computer graphic, and now it would, what, 20 or 30 million dollars that they sold back to Disney, all right? And what it means is that you're looking for creative talents and new Hollywood model, the big movie house doesn't produce creative ideas, but they do fund marketing, promotions, development, but not inventions, not creating these. And the same thing we can do with a startup. We do creative things, put it into the stage where they will come in line with us and, and work with us in terms of development, in terms of funding, the commercialization second stage, so to speak, of that. And so, so as a result, the new model that, 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 that big companies are thinking about is to look for short things, uh, for acquisition merger, or buying compounds that are going to make sense for them, and they're very good with machinery to, 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 to go out and market, to produce, and so forth. So, so now, you now have a, a, a existing strategies, new biotherapeutics. It takes many, many years, about 20 years uh, on the average, and spend about three to $500 million on the average per product. And we don't have those capital in a startup. We do have great ideas. Uh, we have IP, and the IP then is funded by the investors uh, of various sources, and then we'll talk about how to fund it in the climate of economic challenges. Uh, and then the, the new model, evolving model, is that pharma license after success of these clinical stage, uh, phase one, phase two, depending on how far you, you long you are, and they pay for a certain price. And so having those uh, 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 opportunities then allow the investor to invest your company and to put in money so that uh, thinking that, uh, uh, that you do, they don't have to wait 20 years uh, to, to recoup their, uh, their investment, okay? Then how do you get there? How do you fund it, okay? The new ideas are plentiful and must be tested, okay? And, and in the past, university like to talk about incubators. The incubations of these ideas often get infected and never uh, just keep uh, get infected but never move across. Uh, so we need to make sure that we don't get infected uh, and get comfortable uh, just keep inventing parallel track to move forward uh, and to guide these uh, proof of concept prototype development verifications of your idea to a point where the, the concept are validated, uh, de-risk your idea. Um, to get the investor invested, uh, interested, and to be able to fund your development 
uh, of these concepts. Okay, so, so the, in the next few minutes, I want to, to walk you through how we've done that. It's not simple, even if you get approval from university to say, yes, you can do this. Uh, you can start, you can negotiate, and, and then the C4C say, yes, we will postpone your payment, initial payment, but still there's a challenge. How do you fund this great ideas?